Hi guys, it's Emily from Nobel Novels and welcome to today's video. It is my November TBR. Well, I'm try I said I'd be good and not set a big TBR for the month, but you guys know what I'm like. I've done it again. I have set myself a very big TBR. But do you know what? I am so happy with it this month. I love every book that I've picked. Now, I was going to do November, non-fiction November, and there will be, I think, the odd book where I might read non-fiction. I think I've got one of the, st the first one I'm going to be reading is non-fiction. I plan that I will try and get another couple of books from the library for it. Personally, I think I'm going to pick up a couple of Kathy Glass ones because they're quite short and easy to read. And I think that might be a brown. But I'm going to see how I feel because I don't want to put any pressure on myself this month. Yes, I've got a big TBR, but I'm doing three buddy reads and that's about as much pressure as I can manage because I want to try and take it easy. Hopefully, guys, I will try and cut it down to like one readathon a month if I, if I can avoid it. But you guys know what it's like. I find it hard to say no, especially if like Clint's running it or someone, one of you guys I really love. It makes it really hard to say no. But anyway, enough of me rabbiting. Shall I show you the books I'm going to be reading? And by the way, just to save the best till last, I'm going to save all the buddy read books till the end because they're the ones I'm really super excited about. But first one, I'm borrowing from Charlie and it's a small book, so I'm going to show you first. It's Jen Campbell. The Girl at the Aquarium. Now, this is her first collection. Charlie, my gorgeous sister, has lent this to me. And she raves about Jane Campbell. I love her channel. Guys, check it out. I will be linking the channel below. But this looks absolutely beautiful. It's got sort of a very nice range of sort of shorter and low, longer poetry. I haven't even looked at this yet. But I plan to sort of read this in amongst my other books. Because you guys know what I'm like. I like to mix it up. Oh, by the way, guys, I'm including one children's book in this, but I do plan to mix it up and read some other ones at bedtime because I have found since I've started reading children's books at bedtime, it's making me sleep a lot easier, which, as you all know, I need. Now, the second one was a gift from my lovely friend Katie at work, and you guys know that obviously we've just finished Victober, or we're finishing as the time this will be going out. But this is Luke, Lucy Worsley's Queen Victoria, life, daughter, wife, mother and widow. Now, my lovely friend at work, Katie, knows I love my historical fiction. I love my history. This book has actually got beautiful pictures in it, guys. Oh, my goodness. I'm also planning to re start reading it on the 1st of November, which is also Cozy Reading Night, the Autumn Cozy Reading Night. Again, I will actually remember to link the lovely Lauren Hannah Books channel because I'm going to be reading this for Cozy Reading Night. It is literally going to be the first book I will pick up on the 1st of November and I can read this. I think I'm going to read this in amongst other books because where it's non-fiction I find that I like to read that sort of break it down and also this book for looking oh my goodness guys I am literally looking at this book and it is so so beautiful. I love Queen Victoria. I don't know why she interests me so much. I know that this is not actually a long book because obviously it's got a lot that's about the sources at the end. So it's actually only 340 pages, which I think is beautiful. And I don't think that's counting the pictures. But I plan... I love... I love the sound of Lucy Worsley. Now, I've actually put Jane Austen at Home Biography on my wish list at Amazon because I really want that book so badly. So when Katie said about it, I was like, yes, I'm desperate to read that. Now, this could be a long video if I'm not careful. The next one is The Red Queen by Philippa Gregory. It is the next book after The White Queen, which I've just read. Now, once I've read this, I'm going to have to go right back to the start of this and read the first in the Plantagenet series because I've got read two and three, but I've not read the first one. So this one, again, I will be reading. It's about... I'm going to look at it. By the way, my mum gave me this gorgeous copy, so thank you, mum. You know I love Philippa Gregory. This is about Margaret Buford's story and about how she surrendered the belief to the House of England. Now, I love The White Queen, which was Elizabeth Woodfield's story, and it's the, kind of, it's the opposite end of the trail. So it's the side of the other family, which I believe is the York family. And this looks, again, absolutely beautiful. It's, it's Philippa Gregory, which you can't not love. Again, it's not even, four, it's not even 400 pages, which makes it good. It's nearly 400 pages. 
but it looks so, so beautiful. And like you guys know, I love my Philippa Gregory's. So I have this hardback copy. Thank you, mummy. It looks beautiful. Now, the next one was on my list of books that I said about the 10 books that I wanted that I had to read that have been on my shelf. Another one, Charlie gave me this ages ago. Now, I've read one of David Nichols' book and I liked it. And I've read another one and I didn't like it. So, this is kind of going to be my hish pish. If I like this, I'll read more of it. If I don't, there'll be no more. Got another one that's about 400 pages. So, I don't quite know how I'm going to do with it. The way the chapters are, it looks quite sort of strange. I don't know much about it. It's got like a lovely timeline on there. I think I did mention this in one of my in one of my other videos, but look at the little lines on this and look at the beautiful end covers there. I think it, it's like a little map and it's gorgeous. Again, I don't know much about this. It looks like it's about a journey. It, I don't almost want to know, but you know, again, it looks quite good. I want to get this read so at least I know that I've read it. If it's about a journey sort of thing, it won a Man Brooker Prize in 2014, which does give me some hope. I'm not quite sure where I'm going to read it this month, but I do plan to read it definitely because if I like it, again, I may keep it. I may not. I kind of want to get this read though. So, fingers crossed, guys. Let me know if you've heard about that because I don't know what it's like. Now, this is another one. Charlie has lent this to me. She's lent this to me ages ago. I looked at it on her shelf. Again, I've loved some of Carrie Hope Fletcher's work, but I've been a bit funny on the other one so I wanted to get this read Charlie has raved about it I think it's a bit sort of a chicky litty mixed with fantasy it's Evie Snow is 82 years old when she quietly passes away in her sleep it's a way that most people want to leave the world but when Evie reaches the door to her own private heaven she finds that she's become her 27 year old self and the door won't open Evie's soul must be light enough to pass through so to get rid of that she needs to get rid of whatever is making her heavy and so this means unburdening three secrets this is again, this is actually a very long book. Actually, it's 400 pages, so it's kind of intermixed. But Charlie has read about it. The little chapter headers, by the way, they look really beautiful. Look at the numbers, look at that. It's absolutely gorgeous. So Charlie's spoken about this. It's another one that I don't know where I'll read. I like the fact that the print's quite large, so it should mean it'll be easier to read. But it's magic, and it's about someone who's died, though, so I don't know quite how I'm going to feel about that. But I do like the look of it, so it is one that's going to be read, and I can't wait. Now, I thought I'd read all of Paige Toon's book. I know she recently bought out one, and you guys know I loved it. But I found this in the charity shop, and do you know what? I don't actually remember reading it. So, I've got to pick it up. It's Paige Toon, the one I fell in love with. I was pretty sure that I'd read them all. I really was. But when I read her short story collection, the Christmas one, there was a book that didn't make it was interlinked with it that didn't make sense and this was it so this has basically got three lead characters phoebe eliza and rose they're all very different and knowing page they're really going to be interlinked i'm guessing that the way she writes they will be interlinked with other characters from other books which are what i love another long book about 800 pages so another one that i'm going to tackle but it's chiclet, it's page tune, it should be a one that I will read alongside some other harder hitting books. Also, guys, I found out she's writing another book which will be out next year. Guess what I'll be going on my wish list? Guess what I'll be wanting? And guess what I'll probably be pre-ordering? I think Chris is gonna kill me with all these pre-ordering I'm doing. Oh, I've just seen right where this next one is in the pile. I didn't organize my piles very well. This is the next book that I've got to read in the Narnia series. Now, you guys know that I want to read all the series. I will be doing a video about all the series that I want to complete, and this is on it. This is The Voyage of the Door Trainer. It's actually the last one that I believe that was actually sort of filmed and we saw in as a video. And this is the one where Lucy and her cousin are in it. So Lucy and Edmund are in it. Um, and this one looks really, really good. Oh my goodness, guys, can you hear the rain? The rain's just hammering down out here. So this is where they go on the dawn tread out and they're with Kim Caspi in the ninth. So to me, this is kind of like the last one that obviously I will remember from the films, um, which is brilliant. I've, obviously, I would have read Prince Caspian by either by the time I think so. I would have read that by the time this goes up. It's a short book. It's one in the series. I am looking forward to sort of carrying on with the series after this. So this one, it's kind of emotional really because of the fact that I know that it's the last one that obviously holds memories, and I'm looking forward to. Tying it on with all the other ones. Thank you again, Chris, for buying me all of these. 
He's going to get a big head, by the way, he's here while I'm filming. Me? You just heard his voice. Now, I've got some historical fiction books now that I'm going to be reading intermi intermixed with chick lit. This is The Secret Life of Bletchley Park, um, the, w the World War II Codebreaker Centre and the men and women who worked there. I don't know if this is actually historical fiction as in it was true, if it's non-fiction or fiction, I don't know. But it's about Bletchley Park. Now, I remember my mum telling me stuff about Bletchley Park. So when I saw this, I really wanted to buy it. It was in a charity shop. It's not very long, actually. It's not even 300 pages, I believe. So it's sort of a perfect one to in interlink with it. I love World War II. Other than the Tudor, I think at the moment, that is my second sort of favourite historical fiction. Um, as obviously, I remember my grandparents telling me stories. So I'm really looking forward to picking that one up. Now, the next one is one that Julie from Hungry Bookworms given me ages ago when we went down there. I like the fact that this is less than about 300 pages, if not if even that. So it's a nice short book. I don't know again much about it. It's Touching Distance by Rebecca Abrams. A man reaching for his future, a woman struggling with her past, between them the, ch the chasm of the present. It's set in 1790, so another historical fiction. A mysterious and deadly disease strikes the unsuspecting town of Aberdeen. The victims are all women in the prime of their life. Determined to save the patients, talented young physician Alec Gordon embarks on an astonishing medical quest where he discovers what he discovers will shake the close-knit community to the core and change his own life and that of his wife and young daughter forever. This is actually based on a true story, which makes me even more interested. It's historical fiction, 1790, not long. Can't wait to pick this one up. So thank you, Julie. I'm really hoping I get around to liking this. Now, this is the last one that I'm not buddy reading. So, but this is another one that Charlie's lent to me. Charlie, you're going to be getting another book haul back at the end of the month. Now, this has been raved about. It's a YA fiction. It has been raved about all over Booktube, all over Instagram, Twitter, the whole lot. The Hate You Give. Star lives in two worlds, the poor neighbourhood where she was born and raised and the posh high school in the suburbs. This uneasy balance between them is shattered when Star is the only witness to a fatal shooting in the, of her unarmed best friend, Khalil, by a police officer. Now, what Star, Star says well, could destroy her community, it could also get her killed. Like everyone said, this has been raved about so blooming much all over everywhere. Another longer book, 400 pages. Have I set myself a challenge this month? Yes, I have. But I want to hear what you guys have all been raving about. I want to actually see if it matches the big stars all over that everyone's raved about and all the star ratings. Charlie said I'll like it. She said to read it, so... Don't know where it'll be read this month, but if there, I will get to it. Now, the next three are the ones that I'm really excited about because they're buddy reads and they're buddy reads with amazing friends of mine. By the way, guys, I've actually planned to be planning my buddy reads for January even. Am I mad? Yes, you already know that one. So, another one that's been hyped about and raved about all over, The Handmaid's Tale. I am one of the few people who has not read this yet. But... Margaret Atwood's following book, The Testaments, has been another one that's been raved about. And that's her newest one, and that one is following on from this one. Apparently you can't read The Testaments before you've read this. Now, I have been warned that this is very hard-hitting. My mum's even said she's watched, seen some, a brief clip of one of the TV programmes related to it. And she was like, oh my goodness. So, I'm buddy reading with this, with the lovely, the fantastic Linda from Linda World of Books. Love you, girl. We're reading loads of body reads at the moment. But this is um, sort of dystopic. This is very dystopic, and it's about a world that could have been. It was written in the 1980s. So to be honest, I think that's what's going to make it even more hard-hitting, because it could be predicting the future. The Republic of Gilead offers Ovred only one function, to breed. If she deviates, she will, she will like the disententors, be hanged on the wall or sent out to die slowly of radiation sickness. But even a repressive state cannot obliterate the desire, neither Offred's or that of the two men of which her future hangs. I've heard this is very hard hitting. It's not a very long book. It's only just over 300 pages, but the writing is really small. So again, I'm expecting this to be quite challenging. I'm reading it, like I said, with Simone, so that, not with Simone, with Linda. So that kind of is going to break it up. We've kind of got our plans of how we're going to read it. Need to set it in stone. 
but I start it on the 11th of November after the kids are well and truly back at school because I don't think this is going to be one I want them to even go near. Now the next one, I'm buddy reading my first ever buddy read from Char with Charlotte from Books and Bargains. This is our song by Danny Atkins. I picked this up at a car boot. Charlotte's talking about it and she said that she really wanted to read it. It's been on my TBR for a while now actually, since the summer. Four people, two marriages, one fateful night to decide their past, present and future. Now I've read one of Danny Atkins' books and liked it. I've got another one that's on my shelves that I've got to read. This one is probably actually the lo one of the longest ones on my bookshelf. This is nearly about 500 pages. So I'm hoping this will probably take us a while to read. So it will have to be read in amongst the other ones because it is so big. So Charlotte, I am looking forward to reading this with you, but it's scaring me because of how big it is. If a book goes over 400 pages, I get scared. Now, the last one that I'm going to be showing you is the chunkiest book of the month. Casual Vacancy by J.K. Rowling! Yay! Simone gave this to me. I'm buddy reading it with her. I'm so blooming excited. This one, I think I'm going to, hopefully, me and Simone will start at the start of the month because it's very long. I love Harry Potter. As you can well see, had to wear this top when I was filming this. You guys know it's set in a in sort of um, a village. It, it's very big. It's very. It's had mixed reviews all over. Um, it's another. Oh, this one's even longer. This one's five hundred and sixty pages. This one is going to be very challenging, but I will read it. I've heard mixed reviews about it because some people have loved it and some people haven't. But it's J.K. Rowling. Who could not love J.K. Rowling? So I have to read this. I am so excited. Thank you so much, Simone, for giving me this. And I so can't wait for our buddy read. This, I think what I'm probably going to try and do is make sure that I read, start this at the start, hopefully, read our song at the second half and read The Handmaid's Tale in the middle because these ones are like buddy reads and I try not to read. I won't read, certainly won't read the two together. So I think I don't want three books at the same time. Especially because two of them are chick lit sort of thing. So we'll try and interlink this. I don't know how it's going to go. My mum and everyone else says, how on earth do I read more than one book at a time? At the time of filming this, I've got five on the go. I've got an audio book. I've got a buddy read. I've got a Victorian classic. I've got an audio book. Um, I've got a another book. And there's something else. I've got five. I know I've got five on the go. Quite, quite. Sorry. So buddy read. Bedtime book, Victorian fiction, audio book, and another book, extra book to go in the mix. So, yeah. But, guys, I am so looking forward to November. I picked some amazing books I cannot wait to get through. Um, I've got half term at the start of it, so that might kind of mess it up a little bit. I believe the kids are going to have the odd inset day here and there. And it's going to be in amongst the start of the Christmas preparations. But I cannot wait. I am so excited. Now, what books are you looking forward to in November? Are there, are there any that I've spoken about today that you want to hear more about? I can't wait to get my feedback. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel and not subscribed yet, ring my ding-a-ling. And I hope you all have a lovely November. Take care. Bye.